All right, who are you yelling at? <laughs> oh, just Ringo. Yeah, 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 just Ringo. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Welcome to Life with Mary Walter. It is so good to be back. We were away last week because I was skiing in Idaho. Came back in one piece. You'll all be happy to know. So that's good. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a good time. We had, a, we had good snow, which was which was nice. So um, yeah, it worked, it worked out well. We had a good time. New resort we went to. We went to, um, I don't even want to tell anybody where we went because we don't want people to go there because that's what happened to Big Sky. Everybody found Big Sky. And now we can't go there because we can't afford it. So I don't want anybody to go to where we went in Idaho. Oh, yeah. Keep that on the down low. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was fun. Hey, I just want to tell everybody, uh, coming up later in the show, Christine Flowers will be joining us. She's going to be joining us every Tuesday on the show, her schedule permitting, because she does have an actual job. Uh, and we will recap The Real Housewives of New Jersey. There's a new episode tonight. So we'll talk about it next Tuesday. We're on like the wrong schedule. It used to be on like Sundays. So it would have been a good schedule, but now we're on the wrong schedule. So that is my guilty pleasure. It is Christine's guilty pleasure. So uh, we, everybody's got to have a show that's like totally mindless that you watch. And I have several, <laughs> but I really do enjoy that one. So, so I don't know, James, did you watch it at all? I didn't get a chance yet. No, I got it. Okay. Gotta, all right. So it's going to, it's going to be new to you. So, but I have a picture of all the players. We'll put that up and we can talk about that. So you know who everybody is. And she and I are just going to do a little recap because it's a very exciting season so far. Can't wait. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do please like the podcast. You can go to the channel on YouTube. Just look for Mary Walter radio and you will find life with Mary Walter videos and you'll find Mary Walter radio videos. Mary Walter radio being the Thursday podcast, which is a political podcast next Thursday, not this coming Thursday, the Thursday after that, I will be doing the show from CPAC. So I'm packing my bags and heading to CPAC. So um, I have some people who are letting me use a table that they have, like they're set up on Radio Row. And I'm going to have to figure out if, because if I can snag guests and invite them on the podcast, because I know Gordon Chang's going to be there. I've already talked to him. So I'm trying to going to try to get some people to come on. I just got to figure out how to set them up so that they can be on the camera as well. Right. Ver as opposed to me like sitting on their lap. Well, I mean, I'm sure that would you know. bring a few more people to watch, but generally I think probably <laughs> not the best idea. I, I, I reached out to Chuck Grassley and I sent him an email and, and, and I kind of, you know, he kind of knows who I am and I kind of I've had breakfast with him and that type of stuff. So I said, Oh, maybe Chuck Grassley, if he's around, he'll come on. And then I thought, well, how the hell are we going to sit on Chuck Grassley's lap? Right. I'll break it. So <laughs> I'll have to figure out how to do that without my IT team. It's going to be interesting and probably difficult, but we'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. So, um, and if there's no one around at 7.15 at night, if everybody's eating dinner and stuff, I may just do it from my room. So I'll just do it that way. So, but hopefully we will be coming live from CPAC next Thursday. Not this Thursday, next Thursday. This coming Thursday, try to get somebody from Project Veritas on to talk about the whole blow up of Project Veritas. So hopefully we will have that this Thursday. No guarantees yet. Still working on it. So we'll we'll do that as well. Um, so I texted James while we were away. And I will I will show some pictures next Tuesday. I still have to wait to get them back from Photomath. They're not developed yet. And um, we'll have some pictures of, you know, like the, the view and things like that from when we were skiing. But there was a ski club there, the Wilmington, Delaware Ski Club. And they travel like a pack. Uh -huh. like they're, they're like a horde everywhere they go. And, and they were staying in the same place we were staying so they were everywhere when they when they we came downstairs and the lobby was just full i'm like oh oh a bus let off and it, it literally was a bus and it was the wilmington delaware ski club so there's a guy who's in the wilmington delaware ski club that i swear to you i have seen before i cannot place him though and it's driving me crazy that i can't place him so I'm texting James. I'm on the top of the mountain at the restaurant, the Sky House, at the top of the mountain, this gorgeous, incredible view. And here comes the Delaware Ski Club. And of course, I'm like, can we borrow a chair? Can we take a chair? Do you mind if we take a chair? Are you, how much longer are you going to be? You're like, very nice people. Don't get me wrong. Super, super sure. nice people. But when you travel, like a, it's like locusts coming in. Yeah, You're yeah, like, it's yeah, just yeah. a herd that comes in. But very nice people. And I see this guy and I'm like, I know this guy. And I had seen him in the hot tub like a night or two before. And that's what my husband's like, well, we just saw him the other night. I'm like, no, no, no. I know him from somewhere else. So here I am on my phone. 
with like one bar. I'm on the top of a mountain, yet you have one bar. I'm closer to the satellites, but I have one bar. So I'm not quite sure how that works because I'm close. I'm, I'm closer. One bar. Oh. I'm texting James. I'm texting James and I'm like, James, does anybody from our old station, you know, ski? And he got back to me and that's not who it was. And, and we actually found out the guy's name, not familiar at all, but I swear to you, I wanted to take a picture of him because I know this man. And if it's not him, then he is a double somewhere wandering around that looks exactly like him. It was the I, freakiest thing. I really was hoping it was going to be Don Williams because I hadn't called anybody down there to find out if he was out or not. I'm thinking, wouldn't that be great if it turned out to be Don, who for everybody who doesn't know the station, Don Williams is the morning guy who's a very nice person, but he is quite elderly. So... Um, I just imagined, like, I wonder if that's the guy who was skiing. <laughs> he said, I knew it wasn't, but I was hoping it was. Listen, the ski club is mostly retirees because they're the type oh, of people who have that kind of time, right, to just pick up and go yeah. and go skiing right. everywhere. Um, and there was one guy who skis there because there's – there's not a lot on the mountain there it's it's a very it's a smaller resort you know it's not as developed so i love it and there's one rest two restaurants that stay open past like seven o'clock at night so we were sitting in one and we and it was a very locals type of place you would love it it's very bare bones you can get food nice. we had one of the best inventions ever we had something called tachos it's nachos, but instead of the nacho chips, they deep fry tater tots. <gasps> My husband's oh. yelling, tachos! <laughs> oh. And then they put the nacho topping on top of that. <gasps> They're so good. They are to die for. I so did not need this... to know about that deliciousness. Oh my God, we're I need this... that in my life. It's so good. You have to try it, but don't make a lot because it's so filling. Mm -hmm. So filling. And we got it just with salsa, and I think it was like a yeah, I think it was di it was almost like a diced, almost like a bruschetta, like di diced tomatoes okay. and um, guacamole and sour cream. And I thought, oh, we're gonna need a doggy bag. We ate the whole stinking thing. That sounds right. Yeah, and we're yeah. so I'm sitting next, and all the it's all locals and us, and this guy we're sitting next to this group comes in and sits next to us. And long story short, we wound up talking to this guy. He and so we wound up exchanging cards and numbers. Great guy, right? And um, so we're, we're sitting there. Where was I going with this story? So there's only two places. See, oh, Tachos. That was it. So great thing oh. to have is, is uh, that's, that's my, the, my big takeaway from that was Tachos. That's fantastic. That's, that's but, so oh, so he was pointing out the guy we were talking to. We, were, we stopped by his office right there in the Mountain Village. And uh, we were walking by. And he was in there. So we walk oh. in. And he pointed out this guy who's walking past 94 years old and he's still skiing. <laughs> Jeez. God bless him, right? Amen. I mean, yeah. Oh my God. He's he's walking like he's 94, but he's carrying his own skis. And I said to my husband, I'm like, go help him with his skis. And this guy that we met goes, No, no, no. He'll be insulted. I'm like, okay. That dude's so. getting after it at 94. Good job. Nice. Yeah. I know. God bless him. Yeah, um, so what'd you do? Anything exciting? Did you miss me? Oh, I did miss you, and you were so far in the mountains, I wasn't sure. See, I could tell you this awesome story in just the past couple of days. I reconnected with some old friends. It's been nice that way. To, you know, you sometimes you miss your old friends. You don't see them a lot, and then, you know, right. you, everything just floods back. Good times. But I think I have something better for you. I think I have something better for you. Yes. You know how I'm kind of sneaky? Okay, so, a little. Yeah. yeah, depends so, on what it is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can be sneaky. I have that that little thing, and I can be, you know, sly. And uh, I was driving with Ringo um, down to her parents, and we drive these back roads all the time. And uh, there's this cute little diner that we've always wanted to go to. We never get to go because it's always closed. Well, it's also closed this time, but I pulled in, and she said, What are you doing? I said, I got to get something out of my pocket. I mean, I got to get something out of the back. And then I ran around the no. side of the car, no. and I did exactly what you're saying no to. I asked Ringo to marry me, and she first said no three times, and then she punched me, and then well, no, actually she said yes. She just said yes. True story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did that right before Valentine's too, like all sneaky, like because everybody expected on Valentine's Day. Not she expected it, but you, you know what I mean. Like if you were going, I, do I don't crazy. even know what to say. Congratulations, I'm old, I'm I guess. Thank you. Yeah, I'm old. Let's just get this done do this thing. Yeah, you know me. Let's do this did thing. Did you give her a real ring or did she get like a cigar band? So 
she got a vintage ring. Um, oh, nice. Yep. Yeah, and she doesn't like diamonds. She's not, didn't want, and we'd already had these long, 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 long talks um, that she did not want a diamond in any way. It's not her thing. Not because she's cheap. She's just, I don't want that. I'm not, I don't, I don't wear that kind of thing. I, she wanted something that could be interesting and special. So, um, yeah. So I went. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank That's you. awesome. I'm it super is. happy for you. I'm super, thank you, thank you. super happy for you guys. Congratulations, Ringo. Ah! We slid right into six months and then I figured out oh, what the heck. I could wait a year like a weirdo, but eh. Wow. Well, you, I mean, let's face it. You are old, so. I am old. <laughs> and if anybody doesn't know the story, as a first time listener, I met Ringo on this show and we had a radio show together and she, she was a caller and then she would kind of would come on and, you know, talk about stuff. You know, we had a, she was around a long time. I've known her forever. So. Yeah. yeah. When you know, you know. Wow. That is crazy. Well, well, congratulations. <gasps> we have to have a party. hundred percent. hundred percent. Oh, I'm so excited. Yes. Um, wow. All right. So we'll get to some comments here because I want to bring Christine on. She's in the background waiting for, uh -huh. for us so we can talk about the house. That mirrors at you. Oh, I see you. And now we're back. Here. Now we're yeah, back. we both went away and then both came back. I think um, there's a problem with StreamYard. Um, anyway, if you your comments how to modify um they can't they they can't see the see i can't bring the comments up there we go i don't know what's happening here all right so first that one in strange. it's a weird competition to see who gets in first and it is ringo hi guys she says Followed by her sister, Rachel, then Bill, and then Ron, and then Al. I let Ringo be first today. She has news to <laughs> share. Oh, yeah. was Al in on it? And I didn't know. Uh, it, we posted it. We, there was a point where we, we didn't even realize we didn't know. And she just, she posted it, the, a picture. Yeah. I had to go look. Um, yeah, I news to share. I, do, I use the, I use two phones. The podcast is playing on one, and I comment on the other, so I can use the the, the talk to type here uh, and say I I, can, I don't know what is happening. Streamyard's got like a glitch, and it's taking. This is not a good. Uh, I apologize for the delay. Chris says I still can't believe you took time off. I bet you dreamed about work. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, definitely not. Uh, let's see. Unless you have a satellite phone, you need to be closer to the cell tower, not to the satellite. Yeah, I, I didn't think that was how it worked. but. And he says, audio is still messed up. Is my audio messed up to you? Yeah, your audio is coming out bit uh, like a very bit rate kind of thing. Not all the time. It's just that it happens in pieces. When you say it's weird, your audio is weird. Well, okay. So is my if my audio is still weird, I'll go out and I'll come back. But and I'll put Christine in here now. But our video for both of us was going on was was delayed, and yeah. I've been trying to get the comments up, and I'm, Streamyard's not bringing them up right away. So I don't know what's happening. Um, all right. So let me go. Out. I'll go out and I'll come back. I'll introduce Christine uh, very quickly over here. Scotty says, uh, I heard that in, this is on Getter. I heard that in Switzerland, they're worried about not having enough snow for a big ski rally. Yeah. But so this year, the American West got a ton of snow. But the last five, eight years, they got nothing. And Europe was getting a ton of snow. So now it's reversed. Uh, they said 50% of the ski resorts have closed over there. Uh, it makes sense. Um, lost jobs for, for a lot of other businesses. Yeah, that's what happened. And listen. That's why I broke one of the reasons I broke my leg in Montana last year was because there was no snow. It rained two of the days we were there. 30% cool. of the mountain was closed and we were skiing in mashed potatoes. And that was what contributed. The crummy conditions is what contributed to, to my leg. But when we were out in Idaho, it was snowing every day. There was they have their base is like 200 feet of snow. So mm -hmm. it, it it goes back and forth. Um and they're saying just my stream is slowing down. Um it says my audio we can't even hear it and it's just one word and it freezes so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring christine in here and i'm going to go out and come back all right so sure. i'll leave and come back hello christine hi guys 
Hello. First of all, welcome back, Mary. I loved hearing about your vacation. Congratulations <laughs> on your engagement. Dude. Why? That's thank amazing. you so much. Thank you so Is much. Is that really. awesome for you? That's thank so you. wonderful. All right. So listen, real, when you announced it, <laughs> well, no, I, I, I am going to remove myself real quick and come back and see if it fixes up my audio and you two can chat. I'll be right. Back. Yeah. Okay. Hello. So, so what diner were you talking about? This cute little out of the way diner. So if it's in New Jersey and it's mm -hmm. on a road called Tuckahoe and I wish I knew that it was more than called diner, but the only things you see are diner and open in the biggest giant, most giant sign I've ever seen. Is uh, it but Tuckahoe it's diner? It might I, be. It's right if you know the, if you know the area. It's right near Lavari's. It's between yeah. fifty nine and forty. It's that little like cut out little tiny uh -huh. luncheonette kind of diner. We yeah. parked. That's where I parked. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very that's sneaky. Very. That's a very Jersey place to get engaged. Yeah, it is, and we love the. We're big backroads people because we, you know, I, I live all the way up near Philly, and you know, she originally lived from down there, so yeah. we've done a lot of driving, and we take those backroads all the time. Well, I love no, it just seemed like the place. Jersey. I mean, I'm a, I'm a Philly girl, um, yeah. but when I was a little girl, I mean, my contact with Jersey was the Pine Barrens. And I used to love taking the Pine Barrens down and waiting for the Jersey Devil to come out and That's right. kidnap me. That's right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully, uh, hopefully my audio is better. I don't know if it is. I rebooted it. We'll see what happens. Check. All right. Good. And I'm sorry, Christine, that you had to spend summers in the Pine Barrens. It's a little weird. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, no, I went to the shore, but I had to go through the pond to get there. The Although I was threatened several times by my parents to be dumped by the side of the road, and no one would have found that body, like Jimmy Hoffa. Yeah, totally. Exactly. In the Pine Barrens, a hundred percent. It's people have a hard time believing there were parts of New Jersey that are just like so desolate and barren. Oh yeah. So, all right. So um, I want to move on. Let's just let's just go to the Real Housewives. We're going to go there because then we're going to talk about. It's a very Jersey show, which is a little weird because we're going to talk about the Real Housewives of New Jersey, and then we're going to talk about a restaurant in New Jersey that is not far from where I live, and I think we need to go there one one night. I keep telling uh, my IT department who's standing right here. That, <laughs> that that we need to go there one night and and patronize them they come back march 8th though from vacations so we've got some time so all right i'm gonna bring up a picture of the real housewives of new jersey this is the new cast let me know if you guys can see this um let me see can you see it yep okay so this is the new real housewives of new jersey cast and this is season 13. now i realize that real housewives of new jersey is not everyone's cup of tea but we all have a guilty pleasure this is my guilty pleasure and it is christine's guilty pleasure as well i love these girls i've been watching since 2009 since season one so i'm i mean i'm a lifer with these people <laughs> all right so let I'm me ask you I, I want to know who is your favorite cast member currently and who do you miss the most that's gone? Um, I love Margaret because yes! things, I mean, I, I've always loved Margaret. I just, I love her style. I love her sass. I love her take no prisoners attitude. I love the fact that she's one of the only non brunettes there. <laughs> she's just, but she also seems, even though, I'm sure she's had things done, but she just seems real. Oh, 100 percent. Just seems more authentic. I, I also love Dolores. I've 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 always yes! loved Dolores. I think she's she's fabulous. Um, I miss um hmm, who do I miss? I miss Dina and I miss um Ooh. Caroline from um the first season. I miss Caroline a lot. So fun fact during the pandemic. Um, New Jersey's restaurants were open and New York's were closed. So um, Patsy's New York, Patsy's famous Italian restaurant in New York, run by the Scognamilla family. It's fantastic. I think it's 56th and Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, you have to go there. Old school Italian. Amazing. So I know the owners and they opened up a pop up in Asbury Park at the Berkeley Carteret. Mm -hmm. So and it was booked in in like an hour. Like it, for, the, for the three months that they were there, you couldn't get a table. But we got in. And we were sitting right next to Caroline and family. Caroline and family, <laughs> oh my God. Were they obnoxious or were they, I mean, I really liked her. I thought she, she reminded me of women that I actually knew and were, and was related to, as <laughs> opposed to the other people who were like, oh, they're so much fun to watch. And God forbid if I ever meet them in person. But Caroline was someone I could live with. And I liked Dina a lot too. <laughs> 
you Dina, that horrible woman? Mm-hmm. I did. Dina. Oh, you wait, Dina, her sister. Yeah. Okay, I'm thinking not of Danielle. the one. Oh, my oh God, Danielle God. is who I'm thinking of. I, I did not like her at all. But you know who I miss? I miss Jackie from the last season, like the last couple of seasons, Jackie Gold Schneider. I liked her. I don't know why they've demoted her to be friend of the cast. Because she has common sense and she's not a crazy person. That's true. That's that's, that's why. True. I mean, yeah. and they'll never get rid of Teresa, but <laughs> I will tell you something. I was watching this morning in anticipation of tonight. I actually streamed a couple of episodes from season one, okay? Oh, wow. And I will tell you, I do not recognize Teresa. I, the, the mouth is the same. The whining is the same. The nasal, ah, uh, yeah, is the same. The, I mean, the, her face is completely different. And yep. actually she's had things rearranged. She looks like a Picasso painting. <laughs> but I, In I the beginning, like, the, the first season, she looks like a Picasso painting because like her eyes were wonky. That's true, too. But I, I don't I, know how I, they fixed that. But I liked, I liked it when she was, I mean, she was in Jersey. Now she's, I don't know what she's bionically designed. I'm, she's a Kardashian just with Jersey, you know, boobs or flair or whatever. I don't know. But they We're, all are. I mean, Kara, let's see. This is, this is Margaret right here. I don't know if you could see the little pointer on that. Does that, does that work? Does the pointer show up? All right. So, so the second one in on from the left with the white hair, that's Margaret. Margaret, if you go back and look at her first season, and you look at her now, she has backwards aged at least 10, 15 years. She's That's had it. They've all, none of them has their original nose. Okay. None of them have the nose they were born with. Not one of them. They've all been tucked and nipped and sucked and everything else. So, but I like Margaret. I like her, the one with the white hair. Standing next to her to the right, the third one from the left in the purple is uh, Melissa, who is Teresa's sister in law. She's married to Teresa's brother. I like Melissa. Because again, she's she's got some common sense to her, so I kind of yeah. like her. I like Melissa too. I have to say, um, in the beginning, I had a little bit of a problem because I thought she was coming on because she was, you know, a friend of not a friend of. She was related to Teresa, and they right. kind of pulled her into the show. And I'm like, okay, we're having the sister in law. I like her. I like the fact that she has not allowed herself to be eclipsed by Teresa. She's not backing down. Teresa is just is just like this evil cloud that hangs over the entire state of New Jersey. And I like Melissa because she's basically, I think Melissa is as close to a legitimate Jersey girl as anyone yeah. in that cast. She's authentically Jersey and she really hasn't gone Hollywood. She hasn't lost that. And I think that's still her nose. It might not be, but it, 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 her nose is not as weird as some of the other ones. Yeah. Well, she, again, she doesn't have her real nose. If you look at the first season and you look now, she looks like a Jersey girl in the first one. Now she looks like a glammed up plastic surgery Jersey girl. Yeah, but uh, the she one... still looks like a Jersey girl. You can situate her in yeah. Bergen County or wherever. <laughs> Whereas, yeah. I mean, you take the other ones and I'm like, no, no, I have no idea. Yeah. So, and Doris, who's sitting, Dolores, excuse me, um, so let's see. So Mike's right on, on Getter says, like Facebook, it's a smoke job. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. Uh, Dolores is sitting down there in the middle of the picture in the dark blue dress. And I like Dolores because she's from Patterson, which if you know Patterson, Patterson, New Jersey is, man, you got to be tough to grow yeah. up in Patterson. Yeah. Girlfriend is tough. She is yeah. a tough cookie and i like that no one takes advantage of her too i like her because she is teresa's best friend teresa's standing right next to her in the light blue gown with the boot with her her airbags hanging out the her the best money boobs the, the best boobs <laughs> money can buy um and uh they're, they're, they grew up together best friends and mm -hmm. i think that that's shaky and then sitting down the last one sitting down on the right is um is uh what's her name aiden um jennifer 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 aiden and she's married to a plastic surgeon and you can tell because she looks totally different from one season to the next it's amazing i can't her. stand jennifer i i just no. jennifer just no i don't like jennifer she just is so whiny oh my union i don't i just don't like her i love no. dolores i love dolores because i just think she has a good heart I really do. Yeah. I don't see her as a, I think I love Dolores. I think I, I, I can't stand Jennifer because of the dynamic now between her and Dolores in this season. I mean, she's just, I, 
I don't know. I just think Dolores is a good hearted, very tough, you know, Patterson girl, but I think she's very loyal. I, I think Jennifer is just moving around trying to find whatever, whatever team, whatever group she's on. She keeps changing um, loyalties. The reason I like Margaret is for the same reason. I think she's very steadfast in who she's friends with. And although she did go to Teresa's uh, wedding, which we haven't gotten to yet, she left early out of I think, you know, um, appreciation and respect for Melissa, who did not go to the wedding. So I, right. I, I don't know. I like those two. To, to, to me, Dolores and, and Margaret are the two best human beings on that show. I yes. Like yes, James. So I think it's a pressing question a lot of people want to know. Do they actually <laughs> call Dolores Mulva ever or... Seinfeld, Mulver? anyone? Mulver? Oh, Seinfeld. Seinfeld, <laughs> Seinfeld fans will catch it. Yeah, yeah. A... When he couldn't remember her name, name? he couldn't remember. Name Brian to the name female was... body part. Right, right. right, 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 right. And Brian goes, she don't know my name. Is it Mulva? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dolores. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just got that. Um, I missed that and then, that episode, but I just got it. <laughs> I, like, yes. I, I, Sorry, I had to a hot second, and then I was like, I got it, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sorry, so let me it. ask you, how do you how do you feel about the two new women? There is, um, we've got uh, Danielle Cabral, who is, um, she's the blonde, and she, is she the, she, she's the one who's from Staten Island. She's the oh. Staten Island girl who moved to Jersey. To me, you are not a Jersey girl because the Staten Island girl is not a Jersey girl. It's like the cast of Jersey Shore. They were not Jersey people. That's they were right. New Yorkers who moved to New Jersey. She's not a Jersey girl. She <laughs> is She is such a stereotypical Staten Island to Jersey. I don't like her. I I agree with you. But I, I mean, and I know much less about Staten Island and Jersey than you do. But even I, Philly girl, could pick up the vibes that this is not someone, you know, one of these things is not like the other on Sesame Street. <laughs> she just doesn't fit in. Um, yeah. And she's trying too hard, I think. And actually, there used to be a reality show with Staten Island women or Long yes. Island women. Or, and, and she would have fit perfectly in that right. venue, but not not here. And I think nope. she's going to get eaten up alive by the rest of the women, the Jersey oh. women. Which is interesting because you think it would be the other way around. So yeah. I'm shocked. I, I she had a mozzarella party and a mozzarella making party. I and saw that. so so the, lastly, the new the other new woman is on the far left, and her name is Rachel. Oh, is that her? Wait, there's I'm missing somebody. Is that is that Rachel? Wait, we're missing someone. Rachel, Dolores, Margaret. Who is the one? Is the Rachel chick here? I gotta look is, closely. Yeah, she's got two kids under two. Her husband is um, John. Yeah, but, no, you got them all. You mentioned Jennifer. Do I have them all? Kind of is she, who, I think we're missing one. Who was the one who was who couldn't believe the fighting and just started eating Melissa's sandwich, remember? So she says, she says, who's that? And, and Melissa goes, it's mine. She goes, do you mind if I eat it? And she just started eating Melissa's sandwich because <laughs> everybody was fighting. And then she had some mozzarella plate. And you just see her. They got a shot of her, like, just shoving it in her mouth. It was great. I'm like, I love this woman. Was I it, wait her, a minute. I Rachel. Think she's a friend. I think she's a friend of the show. I don't know if that was Rachel. Oh, Rachel Food. Yes, Rachel Fuda. That's who it is. She her picture's not here. Yeah. That's who I like. I like her. She is hilarious. I like yeah. her. She, she's, she's very not, down to earth. Is she a regular? Is she gonna be a regular or is she gonna be one of those like friends of the cast ones? It's interesting because when they announced the cast, they don't mention her. They mention her as who are the thir season 13 cast members. They mention her, but her picture's not here. So yeah. But she was the most real out of all of them. And I'm telling you right now, she doesn't look like any of them. She is the next one to the plastic surgeon. The nose is going to go. She's going to lose weight. There's going to be liposuction and everything else happening because <laughs> that's the way that's going. But so Mary, before if you, look at, if you look at season one, if you go back to season one, none of them had plastic surgery. I mean, they had the typical, they might have had the, the boob job. They might have had a little bit of um, a facelift. But there were no giant bazonga lips. Their their you know oh, their yeah. eyebrows actually moved. Um, now <laughs> and now it, it's totally plastic, and it's a shame because the thing I loved about Jersey was it was authentic. 
New York wasn't authentic. Cal OC was not, you know, the Orange County was not authentic. Uh, Atlanta, whatever. I really like Jersey because of that. And I, I, I think it's losing it because now it has Barbie dolls. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. So um, let me ask you, so far in where we are in the series, as you mentioned, um, we haven't seen all of Teresa's wedding yet. So we haven't seen people leave. We, that, that's a actually airing tonight, I believe, is Teresa's wedding, right? It airs on Tuesday night. So I think tonight mm -hmm. is they're going to air Teresa's wedding. Mm -hmm. So we know that her sister-in-law, Melissa, was not asked to be in it, but she had her her sisters, her new sisters-in-law were mm -hmm. in the wedding. Um, and you see Joe and Melissa just back in a way. Do you think this is it? Does this break that Joe, Joe and his sister Teresa apart? Is that it with these two? In real life, it would. But this is a television show and they want that tension between Melissa and Teresa. They want that tension between Teresa and Joe. So, no, I don't think. I mean, it may it, it may end up that way and they may end up not speaking to each other ever again. But it's like, you know, Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. That's that like kind of <laughs> dynamic that you it makes it exciting to see who's going to hate who today. And I, I really don't I don't know how they actually could do a show where Melissa and Teresa are either are not screaming at each other. I don't think they're going to be screaming right. at each other. But um, can I also say something? I really don't want the Gia and uh, Ariana and whatever. Th those daughters are just like not interesting to me. I see them on Instagram all the time. Yeah. And I really hope they keep them out because now they're little plastic dolls too. And they're very uninteresting. So I hope the next generation of, of Jersey women just stay out of the picture. But yes, yeah. I do think that there will be a falling out between another falling, an 85th falling out between <laughs> Teresa and Melissa. But I think Andy Cohen's going to want to keep them together for the, you know, the Bravo sure. show and the reunions. Yeah. Okay, one more question and then we'll move on. Your favorite house husband? Huh. Um, well, I like the one that got deported. <laughs> to oh, Joe place. Gorga? <laughs> I felt bad for him. You know, it's my business. I understand the whole thing. Um, uh, I think I like Margaret's husband. I was going to say Joe Josephs. Who needs yeah. a kid? Joseph Josephs. Who yeah. does that? I don't understand. It's like David Davids. I, I don't understand. Richard Why? I like yeah. Thomas Thomas. And that was his whole pitch line. We used to say, hello, Mr. Thomas. He'd go, no, please call me Thomas. <laughs> Um, all right. Yeah, top five. All right. So now we brought the audience up on this, and I apologize if this is not your jam, but it is our thing, and it is very Jersey, and it is very lifestyley, and so we love it. So tomorrow, next week, next Tuesday, we'll talk about the wedding and all the drama because I haven't seen it yet, so I didn't know that somebody gets up and walks out. So there's that. That's right. I want you. I hope you appreciate the fact that I am wearing my Jersey hoops tonight. Oh, oh my Jersey hoops. Yeah. Very nice. How do we do three here? One, two, three. How do we do three? One, two. Hmm. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, hey. We're back. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> now you're okay. Right All right. Speaking of Jersey, speaking of it of Italian, there is a restaurant very close, not too far from me, uh, called Nettie's House of Spaghetti. Now it used to be a really good pizzeria, and we used to go there. Uh, could we have friends who lived over that way? So we go there, meet there for pizza. Uh, but it changed hands and became Nettie's House of Spaghetti. And I never paid any attention to it because I was like, eh. Like, I'm not driving 20 minutes to go to an Italian restaurant in New Jersey. As the three of us all know, nee, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a Dunkin' Donuts or an Italian restaurant in New Jersey. <laughs> the way it is, right? <laughs> They're everywhere. So they, they did a Facebook post. And uh, they said... We love kids. We really, truly do. But lately, it's been extremely challenging to accommodate children at Nettie's. Between noise levels, lack of space for high chairs, cleaning up crazy messes, and the liability of kids running around the restaurant, we have decided that it's time to take control of the situation. This wasn't a, de a decision that was made lately, but some recent events have pushed us to implement this new policy. As of March 8th, the day we return from our winter break, we will no longer allow children under 10 to dine in the restaurant. We know that this is going to make some of you very upset, especially of those of you with very well-behaved children. But we believe this is the right decision for our business moving forward. Thank you for understanding. So it's even on Fox News. It's on Newsmax. It's everywhere, this story. 
I'm curious as to what you guys think. Can I go first? <laughs> you sure can. You're our guest. Yes. <laughs> so I, I have had an epiphany. Originally, when I heard this story, I said, oh, they're so mean, you know, kids, I'm an Italian. You always bring the tribe together to eat and, you know, break bread and all this. And then I thought about it and, <laughs> and, and thought about recent experiences that I have had. And I am childless, but I have a nephew that I adore. And I used to be a school teacher. So I'm very used to kids, lots of them you know, in the same place at the same time. Uh, and I think this was a, a, a very legitimate move on the part of this restaurant because, you know, I smiled when you said, when you were quoting what they said about, we're, you know, we're sorry that this might be insulting and unfair to well-behaved kids. And all I could see were unicorns flying in the air. Well-behaved <laughs> kids under 10? Who has that? No one has that. And only their parents love them. Which is, which is why it's great that, you know, infanticide is illegal because otherwise there would be no kids <laughs> under the age of 10. Yeah. Well, so Democrats are working hard to change that. So. Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't, I don't even get that. But so I think it's, it's fine. It's, uh, it's their prerogative. And like you said, there are Dunkin' Donuts. Take the kids under 10 to Dunkin' Donuts. You know, you don't need Nettie's Spaghetti Place. And guess what? Tinton Falls is a very nice town. Um, I've been there many times. I, I love the area. So I'm definitely going to Nettie's now, you know? No I'll meet you. Ten year olds. I'll meet you. We'll do it. We'll do we'll it. We'll go babe. to Nettie's. Yes. Yep. <laughs> we'll go support them. A hundred percent. All right, James. James, what about you? I'd love to say I would be the dissenter in this conversation, but I agree. I, I, it, it's their business. If they think they have a model that works for them, that's going to, you know, make their business better and their customers over 10 will be happier. Great. You know, maybe, maybe they don't do enough children business to even care. Right. Maybe it's just not their, I assume that they can probably take this hit. I don't, well, I, I have to, I would have to think a spaghetti house probably has a lot of kids because it's something kids like kids like spaghetti. So the parents take them out, right? So they take them out for I spaghetti. Agree. Applebee's in response to this 35 Applebee's around in Monmouth County, which is where Tinton Falls is offered yesterday, parents coming in with children, the kids meals were free. Oh, so it's for, panders. right. Smart, smart mm -hmm. though. I thought it was yeah. smart. Yeah. So, yeah, so somebody's, they, I would say some restaurant will take that business. Sure. Is that what I was thinking? Some restaurant will take that business, but I'm just fascinated that people would want to be so upset with a business for making a decision like a. I know. Don't go. It's almost as if they took it personally. It's as if yeah. they said your kid is ugly. You know. Right. Right. It's, right. it's like I don't like your kid. Your kid is a horrible human being, and I, I'm sorry. There may be some well-behaved kids under the age of ten, and I actually have met some of them. But the vast majority of kids that are dragged to a spaghetti house, you know, they're, yeah. they're hungry. Kids who are hungry are volatile. They go rogue. It, it's just, it's not good, you know, when you it's just want to go out and have a nice meal. Yeah. Yeah. And I would think that the, um, the mess that is left behind from kids with spaghetti on the floor and sauce and this and that and everything else, it, it's a disaster. Um, they did say, and they got over 5,000 shares. They announced this on Facebook, over 5,000 shares and over 19,000 reactions to it. And in a post, uh, they, they commented below explaining themselves. And they said in the post section, the comment section, they said that kids running around the restaurant in circles when we're trying to carry trays of food and drinks has made doing our jobs extremely difficult. Now, I just came back from a week at a resort and we never, ever, 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 ever ski or are in any type of vacation situation President's Day weekend. Never, ever, ever. Because it is, I don't go with, I don't go on vacation with my kids. I don't want to go on vacation with yours. It's pretty much where I draw the line, right? Yeah. But there were these kids. And so they had like outside, they had three hot tubs, like three little hot tubs that seat about maybe six, you know, and then they have a big heated pool and the heated pool is temperate, but it's not as hot, obviously, as the hot tubs. You go out there, there's kids, the parents are sitting in the hot tub or they sent the kids down by themselves, which they're not supposed to do. The kids are jumping in the hot tubs, getting out of the hot tub, running over to the pool, jumping into the pool, all over the place, which right. is not good. And then one night, they're just running up and down the hall, boom, 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 up and down the hall. And the parents apparently don't care. 
that their kids are just running up and down the hall. Maybe it's good. They figured they'll get the energy out of them after dinner. I don't know what it was, but every night I wanted to open the door and just grab one of them and pull them in the room and go, this is why you shouldn't be running up and down the halls. You're going to be abducted, you know? Well, <laughs> I, I mean, and you make a great point. And I think in, in their um, post, they also referenced this. I'm putting my little lawyer hat on here. Kids can be dangerous. When, yes. as you mentioned, when you have waiters and waitresses walking around with hot platters of food, and then you have kids whose parents are not taking care of them, weaving in and out, you are causing a hazard. And unless those parents, unless every single adult at the door is willing to sign a waiver that they will not sue for any damages that, that are caused to their kids or other kids or other people, um, I think they're absolutely justified in doing this. Kids that small, I mean, I don't know why they made the cutoff 10 exactly. I guess they figured they couldn't make it a little, because I don't know, I've seen some crazy 12 year olds too. But right. I mean, they really, I think they're absolutely right. And, um, you know, good for them. And I think overall, I think we're representative of the majority of people who are, are hearing this story. People who don't like it um, are the kind of people who would let their kids run amok anyway. So. Yeah, like, I, I, this has come up before in a different topic we had, but I went to a fish show. If anybody knows the band with PH Fish, yeah. sort of like the Almond Brothers and the Grateful Dead, full of adult activities and madness, literally bringing like, I, we had a family in front of us with a baby and two kids just running amok on a, on a lawn, you know, a lawn, like on a, you know, big open air place, yeah. just running amok at a fish show. I'm like, what are they going to run into? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and who would do that, you know? Like, Parents with really bad judgment, you know, and so just, just go and, you know, feed your, or do takeout, you know, feed your kids netty spaghetti in your home, yeah. you know, where you can delight yeah. in the, in your well-behaved children. And you can clean up the mess. Uh, Mike on, on Getter says the parenting is lost in the nanny state. Uh. And that's, tr listen, my parents took us to restaurants when we were kids and we had to behave because if we didn't, it was back in the day where you could put, send the kid out to the car. And then tell them yeah. don't get out until you're ready to come in and act like like you should without having someone call dyphus on them so right. we knew if you were acting up my mother would just go go to the car <laughs> and my father my father would give him the keys you'd go to the car you'd sit in the car until you were ready to come out and then you could come back and have dinner mm -hmm. so but you can't apparently can't do that to children now apparently that's cruel or i don't know you, you can't do that but um, but they would tell us lock the doors so no one can get in. And when you're ready, you can come back in. <laughs> and you know, and, you're right. But it's that's, in the car. Actually, that's actually a crime now to have kids in a locked car. Um, I think it's fine. It happened to me. My, mm -hmm. <laughs> we also yeah. used to get yelled at. It, we, uh, my dad took us when my mom was in the hospital and I was, I think I was eight. My one brother was four, one brother was two and, and one brother was like, you know, not even walking yet. And he took us to Gino's, um, you know, it was a fast food restaurant. I don't know if you guys. Oh, yeah. 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 And, Endless salad bar. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, it was great. The Gino giant. And uh, yes. my one brother started throwing French fries at my one of the other brothers and they started screaming. And my father just picked up both, paddled them on the rear. They shut up. No one went up to him. No one said, you're abusing your children. You know, this is back in the late 60s or the early 70s. I forget. Now, today, like you said, Dyfus is going to come after you. It's, it's just, it's ridiculous. And that's why we have these kids today. Because the parents are raising them to be that way. You know, not to understand boundaries and limits. So the more I talk about this, the more I love this restaurant. I think I, I think, I think I want to go there and buy gift certificates to this place. You mean oh. I, I can't bring little Brantley in there to do his thing? He needs space to run. You're you're stifling his creativity. Now you say he can't come. Great. I know. By the way, he doesn't have. You're not using his correct pronouns as you're serving him his manicotti. <laughs> uh ron says oh. amazon dessert dessert but seems from what i've heard i was one of those unicorn kids i don't know what's a unicorn kid the, the one i was talking about that was well behaved under the age of 10 <laughs> oh 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 yeah i think i think it's a generational thing because like i said we just got our butts kicked you know because yeah. we knew if we ever acted and my mother would smart parents my parents brought 
like coloring books for us so that you could sit and or read a book or have a coloring book or um you, you know we went to this there was one pizzeria near us there weren't a lot of restaurants where i grew up it was a very rural area we go to this one place and we would order pizza because we always wanted to go there for pizza because we could sit and eat the pizza and not have it at the house and it took like an hour and a half to get a pizza they were just notoriously slow my mother would bring a box of cereal <laughs> For, for my brothers so that my brothers could eat the dopey box of cereal and not complain that they were hungry and run around, you know? So you just, it's just about- Did you ever um, hear Al the phrase, did you ever hear the phrase, this is to tide you over until you get the yeah. other meal. Yeah. Right? Yes. Here's a full <laughs> meal to tide you over until you get your actual meal. Yeah, they'd have a box of Count Chocula or Frankenberry <laughs> or something like that, and they'd be happy. And, and my father, my father gave up the whole junk cereal fight by the time the third one came along. He was just like, oh, whatever, give it to them. You know, that's that. So um, Al says, my grandmother had, a, I think he means strainer, had us, had us trained right is what I think he means to say here. We sat under the table and she would sneak her drinks or beer underneath for us. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That is it. great. That's fantastic. So, so yeah, so, so we definitely uh, should go there. Last thing is an etiquette question that I uh, have. Right. You're asking me about etiquette? <laughs> not a good, not a good thing. Well, this is something we all deal with as Teresa Giudice from Real Housewives would say, textuses, which by the way, did you know she has a college degree? So there's that. In um, what? A fashion, hold on. She graduated from, uh, let me see, hold on. I've got a little a little biography on them all. I've got I've got a cat on my lap and I got a cat here. She's like cat hair everywhere. Um she graduated Berkeley College with a degree in fashion marketing and management. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well that that, I mean, that takes some smarts. Hey, listen, she's nothing if not very clever to be able yes. to manage herself into the position that she's in today. So I do not underestimate Teresa. Plus, but she pronounces her last name incorrectly. It should be Judice. I don't know why she pronounces it Judice. It's like every time I hear that, I'm like, ew. It's on the I thought it was Judici, right? Or it could be Judici or Judice. In fact, I went to high school with a girl named Gina Judice. So when I saw it was spelled the same way, I'm like, why are they calling it Judice? I mean, she's this Italian you know, really Italian woman. And then, then Joe was born and raised in Italy and now he's back living in Italy. Anyway, she's, she's an Italian woman. And I don't know if you ever saw when they went to church and she goes to her, she doesn't know that any of the prayers, she doesn't know anything, but she blesses herself. They had like a little chapel. And remember they had like a little chapel at the family. Yes. They went somewhere and it was like the family chapel and she blesses herself when she goes in, but she couldn't say the, our father or the hail Mary. I was like, all right. Well, I will You're say, Ever One since they changed the script, I call it the script, ever since they changed the script, um, which was whatever, 20 years ago, I still do the responses that I grew up saying. So I'm the only person when the priest says um, whatever, something, something. Peace be with the, you. The, the Peace be with you. And, and I'll go, and also with you, while everyone else is saying, and with your spirit, and you hear my voice above the crowd, yeah. and also with you. And they're all looking at me like, you haven't been here in a while, have you? Yeah, well, it's, they only changed it probably about five years ago, not 20. So okay. it's still <laughs> relatively new. Thank God, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Anytime. Okay, so here's my etiquette question. And this, I think everyone has had this. Okay, so someone texts you, super early so we were in idaho so we're on west coast time so the east coast is three hours ahead of us right mm -hmm. so i had a friend who texted us on saturday at what was 6 45 in the morning in idaho and woke <laughs> me up right and i had my phone on because i had the alarm set because yeah. we had to get up to get out of the hotel to catch the flight back so um, I, I said to her, I just texted her back. I'm like, it's 6.45 in the morning. And then and, and she was texting to wish my husband happy birthday. And she and she texted me and was like, happy birthday. Da, da, da. And I said, it's 6.45. So she texts me back and goes, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were home already. Go back to sleep, right? <laughs> I was just like, she goes, tell Doug, I'm sorry. I woke him up. I'm like, I think, I'm like, I think the second text did that, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So, but your natural instinct is to say, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, right? Yeah. But if you do, you're doing it again, <laughs> right? Doubling so down. what's the proper etiquette? Do you just not, 
respond then when someone goes at 6 45 in the morning or do you just not respond and respond later <laughs> or do you do what she did which i think is everyone's instinct to go oh my gosh i'm so sorry i think there's a middle path i don't know james if you might now you have the option where you can click on a response and do like a thumbs up or a heart or a ha ha or a sad face and it's not a new text it's simply um an acknowledgement of the one that already came in and it doesn't bling or ding or anything it just makes like a little bloop. so and it's not that disturbing so i think if you can do that acknowledging that you received the text you can just sort of like put a thumbs up or a I, I don't know if there's a, an I'm sorry thing, but no, I would not respond. I would wait until, you know, until two or three hours later and then have this long apology. It's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And this is why I didn't respond to your last half. <laughs> well, here's what's interesting. First of all, James, you're blue for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. I, I was hoping we'd acknowledge that because that came magically. I don't really know how. Like, <laughs> I didn't throw blink on my camera. I'm not really sure what happened here. I feel like a Smurf. <laughs> and by the way, I just saw, I just saw myself later on here. I swear to God, I'm not picking my nose. I have cat hair all over my face because Shirley is sitting on my lap. And I've been going like this, and there's literally cat hair flying in the air here. And I, I just looked because we're 20 seconds behind on Getter, and I looked over, and it looks like I'm picking my nose, and I wasn't. I was trying to pick cat hair off my face. So, so first of all, James, you're blue. That's one thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, Al says, I answered in Latin for at least 10 years. <laughs> Ron <laughs> says, I still miss the Latin responses. And Al Me said, too. I thought remembering Latin would be important. <laughs> <laughs> and then they took it away from us. It's just horrible. It's horrible. Oh, by so, the way, this is a whole new story. But you know that traditional Catholics, I, I'm sure you talked about this, who like the Latin mass, now the FBI is investigating us because right. we are domestic terrorists. But that's another story. Yes, well, you know, because you do speak a foreign language that nobody knows. It's kind of like being able to write in cursive. <laughs> You're a threat. Um, and for the record, if that if you have a an an Android and someone uh, gives you that like that thumbs up or the emphasis or whatever you can do on you can do that on iPhones. You can like yeah. emphasize what somebody did or like what somebody did or whatever. Every time you do that, that comes through as a separate text to someone with an Android. Oh, okay, forget it then. <laughs> yeah, I suggested. That. I, I I checked my text yesterday and I have a thread that goes with my my some of my high school classmates and there's about ten or eleven of us on this th this text message that's been going for years mm -hmm. and um and i had 39 messages the vast majority of them were people oh so and so laughed at blah blah blah, blah. so and so emphasized someone did i get i get a separate text because you people have iphones that don't play well with other phones so it comes through as a separate text for every single one like subtitling so. your conversation <laughs> exactly yeah, what totally. happens exactly yeah so james i don't know what you did but um you're purple on getter and blue on youtube so i have tried everything you can imagine every you're setting purple. yeah i'm purple now yeah it's it's merged in a new color it's actually lovely like a violet your hat's violet mm -hmm, your background's mm -hmm. purple mm -hmm. yeah. it works it works i have these weird grains in my thing right here that i can't see. yeah you got like all on. these lines <laughs> Talk about posting the machine. It works. Yeah, I don't know what she did. So um, I was telling everyone, so Thursday, uh, we're going to try to get someone from Project Veritas on to talk about what happened with James O'Keefe and what's going on there. They are bleeding followers on Twitter like crazy. Supposedly, more is going to come out. Supposedly, James O'Keefe was misappropriating funds. I kind of find that hard to believe, but we'll, I guess maybe more will come out in the wash. I have no idea. So we're going to try to explore that on Thursday. All right, next Tuesday, hopefully, uh, if we have schedule permitting, Christine will will be back with us. We'll talk about Teresa's wedding, which we're going to see on The Real Houses of New Jersey uh, tonight, airing tonight, which is very exciting. Yeah. Uh, if you have not done so, please like the, uh, the, the podcast. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we will have the audio on Apple Podcasts and Spotify within 24 hours is what we usually shoot for. Uh, Mike says, at least you're not green, James. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> Good call. So, uh, and Christine, anything you want to plug? Anything you're doing Oops, that you would like to plug or anything going on? Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 
put my columns up on my Facebook page. And uh, if you follow me on Twitter, it's Flower Lady 61. There you go. At Flower Lady 61. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, are you going to CPAC? Nobody invited me, and I never find out when it is until it's already too late. When is it? You don't have to be invited, number one. Anyone can go. Oh, good. See, all these yes. years, I thought I was being excluded. No, I decided to go while we were in when we were in Idaho. Somebody uh, said, you know, are you going? And I got a conversation with somebody else. I'm like, you know, it's probably a good networking opportunity. I should go. So I'm going. And I got to tell you, I got a room in Expedia that was not expensive. And then I went to the Marriott page and the Expedia rate was cheaper than the Marriott rate. So they match it and they give you 25 percent less. Whoa. So I'm yeah. Yeah. So I'm paying two hundred and eighteen dollars for a room in this in the Gaylord at the National Harbor. Wow. Oh, my God. That's fantastic. When is it? What are the dates? It's uh, March 1st. I'm going down uh, Wednesday, March 1st. And it's really starts Thursday, Friday are the two big days. Some That's people stay on Saturday. But... Some people I... stay till Saturday. Okay. Guess what? I may, I may end up at least one of the days because I have to be in court on Wednesday, but that's a travel day anyway, probably. So yeah, I might see you there. I'll text. All you. right. Well, I'll text you, 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 have, you do have to buy a ticket. You do have to buy a ticket. Tickets are not, not inexpensive, but it's, it's a business expense. So I just got my refund, my tax refund. So, you know, okay. Good investment. There you, there you go. Um, Al said, but try turning red. It's a happy color for your good news. Ah, uh, and James says he's somewhere between violet and lavender. Al, his picture on my Android is normal, but my iPhone shows him as deep lavender. It is. Uh, Ron is says, weirder. totally enjoy following Christine on Twitter. That's right. He follows you. Yeah. Yes. And I have to say something. Uh, I know, um, Ron, Ron, Ron watches us all the time. I have known Ron since I was on WCTC. Oh, no, probably 101.5 back in the 90s. I mean, so Ron is great. He's amazing, a sweet guy. And he has uh, a couple of, he has a cat family. And uh, his, let's see, he, would, he texts us pictures every now and then. But um, his, his cat, Baxter, passed away unexpectedly and so sympathies to ron because he lost baxter baxter crossed oh, yeah. the rainbow bridge unexpectedly oh, so sorry to say a prayer yeah. for him. Yeah. by the way mary speaking of 101.5 um i think you might have seen it on my facebook page you have a huge fan in father richard jasper who is a catholic priest in philadelphia and he followed you when you were on 101.5 so you definitely have your admire you have your divine admirers well i saw that i liked the comment and i sent him a friend request <laughs> oh, good he's great too he puts his homilies online oh he's really? really he's a very cool priest most of my priest friends are very cool all of them are actually yeah i have a couple of priest friends who are very cool and this is something not i know we want to get off um Oh, Ron's. Oh, are you on? Are you on? We don't know Twitter. Christina's Twitter handle here. She just gave you her Twitter handle at Flower Lady 61, right? Yep. Yeah. At Flower Lady 61. Are you on Gitter? I'm not, but I'm I'm, I'm going to get on Gitter. <laughs> okay. All right. So Wait, you're not I'll on Gitter. Say that. I'm going to get on Gitter. So this will make you all laugh. My husband and I volunteered for the pre cana team at our church. They're rebuilding it. It kind of went away after Sandy. So we thing? volunteered. Okay. So yeah. fingers, fingers crossed we don't have to do the sexuality one because mm. <laughs> I had, had we, that with pre cana <laughs> Oh, yes. Yes. But I found pre cana to be really interesting. And we, this is something we can talk about one night because, um, they actually have you can you don't have to be catholic to attend pre cana if you want to go you really? you can you know you can you don't have to be catholic to go though the, they allow non-catholics in wow. um and That's and fair. i have to tell you pre cana we did it at villanova and um you know the sexuality one was hilarious because and there's a priest sitting in the room right and the couple that was presenting it goes so natural family planning or as we like to call it vatican roulette <laughs> And I'm like, oh my God, like our priest for our church would haul you, he'd grab you by the scruff of the neck and haul me out the door. So we could never do that. <laughs> we could never do that one. But um, 
so so we're uh we've already had a couple of meetings and they're rebuilding the team which is good and um so it's, we have a couple of training sessions coming up. So I'll let you, I'll fill you in on that. But I have to tell you, I think premarital counseling is great because when we went through it, we had couples that, um, that there was one couple that I don't know if they let them get married or not. They hadn't talked about how they were going to raise children, like what they were going to do, you know, because they, they give you all different scenarios and how you would handle it. They hadn't talked about how they were going to handle their money. Like, are you going to have joint accounts? Or are you going to have joint accounts and separate accounts? You're going to have totally separate. I hadn't discussed that. And, and they, they were that couple. Whether they were actually going to have children, because that's a huge biggie oh. thing to do. Yeah. But when you're in pre Cana, you have to say you're going to have children. Because yeah. you yeah, have to know that. Okay, good. Oh, yeah, no, no, you have to meet with the priest still separately. So then when it's all done, if you get your certificate from pre-cana, then the priest that's going to marry you meets with each of you individually. So your partner's not in the room and asks you a whole bunch of questions. And you have to have the same answers. Which is why I find it interesting that they allow non-Catholics to do this, because a non-Catholic would not necessarily be obligated to say that they're going to have children i mean we do I, we catholics kind of you have to, right you have to be open to that but it's interesting that they would allow non-catholics to partake well the non-catholics don't have to pass pre-cana in order to get married right so they're just taking advantage of the marriage counseling part of it. Like they're the, like auditing the, it, right? <laughs> right, exactly. They're auditing the course. If they don't need the certificate and they're not mating with the priest who's marrying them later because they're not getting married by a priest. Right. So that right. part of it, they don't have to do, but they benefit from you know the, the, the section on finances. They benefit from the section sure. on communication. They benefit from, so, so spirituality is, is a segment. You know, um, there's one about, what is it? I forget, it's not sexuality, but it has something to do with, like with intimacy, like which doesn't necessarily mean sexual, right? So there's a segment right. on that. So um, see, James will counsel you guys before you get married. We'll give it to you for free because otherwise you got to pay in the church to go. Oh, I'm sold. I can't wait we for know, this counseling. All, all, um, we're laughing about it, but but Precana really is uh, a, an exceptional gift to couples who really, really want to go beyond the whole romantic love idea. I mean, this really does does assess whether or not you're in it for the long haul and you understand what the what it is. And it's not just a religious thing, as Mary was saying. It's psychological. It has to do with finances, pragmatism. Yep. It helps you get ready for a life with someone else. I mean, me, I've never been married, never gone through it, but I know people who have. And I also know counselors who've done it. And it's just, it's amazing. And it is wonderful. So I can see why a non-Catholic would, would engage yeah. in it. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's super important if you're getting married to do something like that, because you talk about stuff that maybe you haven't talked about before, especially if you've only been dating for six months. Just saying. <laughs> but you've known each other a long time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so and uh, Scotty here. Sa oh, Mike says happy Fat Tuesday or as us Catholics oh. like to call it Shrove Tuesday. It is Shrove Tuesday for the Catholics. In the, in the audience ready for tomorrow mary because i gotta go get the ashes the only reason i have yes. bangs is because of those ashes because everybody who's not catholic they look at you and they say you've got something on your forehead over there wipe it off <laughs> you know what though most people in the northeast like in new york boston phil the northeast part of the country they know darn well what's going on on your foot they know right. and you got the priest who either gives you the smudge like you get the priest who gives you the thumb right like and you switch yeah. lanes. Am I the only one who you switch lanes because you could see how people are coming back from getting their ashes and there's some who just get, get this. And then there's some who get the actual cross and you're like, yeah. and you switch lanes to get with the good one. <laughs> I want the big one. If I'm going to go through this thing, I want my entire forehead covered with soot. Right. Rather than looking like a thumbprint. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It really does look like there's dirt on your forehead. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you have legitimately the mark of the cross, it's like, okay, we know where she's coming from. Exactly. Now you're really purple, James. Oh my God. Now you look like a grape. Yeah. Weirder by he's the like, second. He's like um, Violet Beauregard in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I was going to say that. 
<laughs> Why Violet? You're Violet. <laughs> I, I turned on my black light because we're about to have a rave in here when we're done. So I figured oh. I'd keep the black light on. We can kick it old school. Uh, James says going through the dispensation is a chore for marriage. Oh, okay. Um, but I remember when I was at Fox, um, I was on a couple times on an Ash Wednesday and the makeup department, because I don't know if you know this, but pretty much everybody, there's a lot of Catholics at Fox, especially on air. The, Fox is the ton of Catholics at Fox. And you see this with all of them. And the big question in hair and makeup is, do you want me to cover it? <laughs> and everybody's like, no, I went and I got my ashes. I'm keeping them. And they let you on air. Like they, they'll let you, they'll let you keep them. So you'll see that. some, but not all of them. So, wow. Yeah. It's all part of the tribe. Yeah, yeah part of the tribe. Yeah. How do you think I wound up on EWTN? Because when I was in Washington, DC, they wanted people and every single person who was on air uh, uh, when I was there, it was all Catholic the produce everybody and so they so just funny. cycle us through ewtn as for commentators for, for for like political and news commentary they just cycle us through and the dress code at ewtn so you can't i couldn't have i came in with with short sleeves in the summer they had they maybe they put a shawl on me because you can't have bare arms you couldn't have anything below your collarbone it's showing again I, it had to be like up here like this, like I'd have to like re and, and they would, they would rearrange everything. And I, it was ridiculous. And they're like, well, the older viewers get upset. So they would have all these cover ups for the women to, you know, we, it was shy of putting a, a, you know, a veil on my head, you know, like the old days back when you <laughs> went into church with the thing on your head. So yeah, so I was shocked the first time I went in there because it's the summer. So I have on a nice dress. I have short sleeves. Oh, we have to cover you up. I'm like, what? Yeah, and it's I think it's what two fingers below your collarbone or something like that. I'm like, it's like the nuns and how many inches Catholic of your skull are you Exactly. I don't know. Mother Angelica struck me as a pretty modern kind of woman, pretty hip. I'm surprised that they were that, you know, obsessive about that. But I mean, I remember going to the Vatican on an August afternoon sweltering heat um thank god i was wearing pants because you know otherwise i would have had a little mini skirt on and i you know i had to go and find a shawl to put over my shoulders yep. i mean actually when you're inside it is cold in the vatican itself but you just you just figure like you know men should be wearing burkas too there you go exactly well you know if they got enough of that hair you can't tell sometimes with some of them and <laughs> Dude, I'm saying in Italy, eh, it's a lot of them in Italy, you know, well, you know like that. But when you go into EWTN, there is a huge portrait of Mother Angelica looking down. There she is. <laughs> I and loved still, her. They I love her. Show her. They still show her on the channel. So I know, I know it. It was a year before I knew she passed away because I really thought that was still her. <laughs> No, and I don't mean that to be disrespectful at all. Seriously, I did not no, know, I know that she was gone. But yeah. she's not gone. She's with us. By the way, speaking of Catholicism, look what I just have randomly lying around on my table. Oh, a Goya candle. I got St. Jude. And I have St. Michael somewhere. I don't know where. I, I lit him for the um, the Eagles playoff and the Super Bowl. Oh. I'm, I'm done work? with St. Jude. St. Jude, yeah, no more. St. Michael, maybe. I'm sorry. Ooh, she's tough. Hot I'm takes like, over sorry. here. Look at this. I'm sorry. He <laughs> promised a Super Bowl for me, and I'm done. That's it. Pretty sure. Uh, okay. Pretty sure that's not somebody, how it works. <laughs> there was somebody praying harder in Kansas City. I didn't know they had Catholics in Kansas City. This stinks. Well, maybe it's the Baptists. There you go. Um, <laughs> Al's. Al says, James, this is good practice for marriage. I think he means having to sit here and listen to Christine and I go on and on. <laughs> what al is saying here i'm not 100 percent sure so I'm sure all right is much much more gentle and, and, and loving <laughs> and accepting of the fact that her fiance is purple yes she i don't know well, i might she, hear about it later <laughs> rachel, yeah her sister rachel says he's the same color as my hair so <laughs> <laughs> All right, Christine, thank you so much for being with us. It's so much fun to have you. I so look forward to next uh, next Tuesday. That is fantastic. Um, Al said, I'm too polite to say it in those words. <laughs> so I said it for him. Um, 
And uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, thank you to everybody else for joining us. And we will see you on Thursday, 7.15 for uh, Mary Walter Radio. We'll do a political podcast. Like I said, I'm going to try to get someone on from Project Veritas to see if, I mean, I don't know how much they can say at this point in the game, what they can and can't say. I have a cat. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll see what we can do about that. So that's that. Everybody have a fantastic week. And um, we'll see ya on Tuesday, Thursday, on Thursday, not Tuesday, Love Thursday. Bye, Bye, honey. Take care. Bye, James. Bye. Yeah. Congratulations. Bye. Bye.